How's it going guys? Welcome to RC Cincy. Uh, today I wanted to go over a few things. Um, it's going to be kind of a overview video and uh, a few recommendations and what I have uh, in my airfield uh, bag. So uh, I purchased this plane. Uh, actually my fiance bought it for my birthday. Um, I'd say I've had it now for a few weeks, and honestly, I was ex very, very scared to fly it. I didn't want to wreck it. That was my main fear. Uh, I've flown trainers and other planes before, but this particular one, you know, I just it had so many features, and it was so nice that I did not want to see it break. So, um, fortunately, fortunately for me, uh, I joined a local club. And uh, I tell you what, they've been extremely helpful. Um, they have uh, training night, uh, yeah, training nights on Tuesday where they uh, they'll have a few uh, instructors there, and they will actually help you uh, fly. They're also so kind that they have trainers that they'll let you use. They have a flight simulator in the clubhouse. Um, so that right there to me is worth that fifty dollar uh membership fee a year that right there it, it it pays for itself you know um we also have you know pit boxes uh place to hang out with uh pl covered uh porch area with picnic tables uh you have power outlets you have a restroom you have parking so really and you have a uh landing strip an asphalt takeoff and landing strip um and you can also land in the grass. So really, it has quite a bit, and it actually has an area for drones. They used to have gates there. Uh, they would set up gates and races there. Uh, they're in the containers right now. I don't know who sets them up or I haven't really looked into that, but that's just nice that they have that. So it's a really, really nice airfield. Uh, you do have to have an AMA license, and uh, if your aircraft is unmanned, uh, uh, vehicle or whatever uh, is over 250 grams you have to register it with the FAA uh, on that field I think anything that pretty much goes on that field has to be registered but I know a general uh, thumb rule you know like for instance my um, my mini Mavic is under the 250 gram limit so I don't have to register that technically um, if you're gonna use it for you know commercial uses and try to make money off of it that's something different you need a pilot license and have the drone registered as well but uh, in this particular case you know uh, so your annual uh, AMA license uh, is not cheap I think a park flyer license is pretty cheap these days it's basically insurance is what you're buying so a park flyer insurance of any local parks I think is 38 or 48 bucks I can't remember exactly but I know an adult uh, AMA license is $75 I'm positive on that and then uh, to register this particular aircraft was $5 with the FAA it's a very simple form uh, serial number or make model whatever uh, the color just some identify markers your name uh, and uh, that's pretty much it you pay the five bucks they uh, you know save the email with a number for the registration for it um, you know, and then, uh, the AMA will give you a receipt with your, uh, number on there, and then you actually get a card in the mail. Uh, they're supposed to, I think they used to send me magazines as well. You, like, get a free one-year subscription or something like that. Um, that was okay, you know, it was pretty cool. Um, well, the light's real weird on that. It's not really lighting it up. That's the sticker you get from the, uh, actual AMA when you get your license. You get this sticker. I didn't want to put it on my vehicle. I don't put stickers on my new vehicle. Uh, so I stuck it on my um, transmitter case. And then the sticker from my glasses I stuck on there as well. Just to, you know, just kind of make it my own. But, uh, so, it's it was a good experience. Um, the, I went up there for trainer nights. And they actually let me fly. I think it was like... Uh, he had a few packs and he would kind of swap them out and charge one and fly with the other I think I flew four or five packs um, and uh, the airplane I was flying was similar remind me kind of like a cup. I don't know it was a red one I forget the name of it but uh, it was a really nice plane it had big wheels you pretty much signed on grass if you wanted to uh, ran on a 4S 4S 
4,000 or 5,000 milliamp battery. It had AX3X, it had SAFE. Um, he had a 7S uh, spectrum transmitter and then a, a DX8. So he had two reasonably nice transmitters. We had the buddy link hooked up. So um, flip of a switch, I would fly and then he felt like, you know, something was gonna happen to his plane, he could flip the switch and then take over. So it was a really nice experience. Uh, it worked really, really well. Um, I had zero issues, so I actually flew with stabilization on or safe on, and I flew with safe off. I can fly with safe off, no problems. I'm just not as smooth. I'm a little, you know, I'm not as smooth with the sticks yet. I'm obviously still, I would say, an intermediate pilot. Uh, I wouldn't say beginner. I'd say probably intermediate. I know some of the videos I've posted on here have not been very good, but um, I wish I could have recorded some of the flights. I've done quite a few flights with that and uh, I've just had so much fun. So I went up there uh, and of course I flew on them packs and then towards the end of the evening, we, he was kind of wrapping up. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna get this plane in here. He's like, you sure about that? And we kind of looked at, you know, everything, how it's set up, make sure everything was working right. Everything was set up pretty good. He said, well, this is what I'll do. I'll uh, get up in the air for you, trim it, and then hand you the transmitter, let you fly around. And then when a timer goes off on your controller, just hand the controller back to me and I'll land it for you. I said, that's the best uh, deal I could have possibly gotten in that situation because I was still a little nervous, you know. So we actually, he actually took this off for me. Uh, it didn't need very, I think it clicked like one thing. I forget what it, which one it was, but honestly, probably, he said it basically didn't need any trim. Um, so it flew very well. He was surprised how nice it actually flew. It was like on rails pretty much. Um, so he hands the controller to me. I fly around basically the entire pack. The timer goes off. I have a set for five minutes for that particular pack. I could probably go a little bit longer, but at that time I wanted to be safe, you know. Uh, plus I don't like draining my packs too long. I'm probably gonna start using voltage alarms uh, and so just set them for three seven. A lot of folks set them for three eight. Three seven I think is a good voltage. I wanna get a little bit of time out of them. I've been cutting off at three nine, three eight. So that's kind of robbed me of a little bit of time, not a lot, but uh, so I, uh, I flown around and then he landed it for me. Um, he didn't use the flaps or anything like that. He landed it for me. Zero issues there. Uh, went home. I was so excited about it. Couldn't stop thinking about it. And sure enough, uh, I think like two or three days later, we had a rain day and I did my maiden flight. Unfortunately, I had no one with me there to film it. I wasn't just going to ask them to do that. Uh, so I did my maiden flight by myself, took off and landed. Well, a true maiden flight. Uh, after I enjoyed that, I did another pack. I think I ended up doing four packs that day. And then pretty much every time I go out, uh, I'll fly it at least uh, five to six times. Um, I'll charge both batteries. So this is why I initially started with, uh, and I'll get into my setups and everything right in a second. So I initially started with this pack right here. Well, actually, technically, I bought this pack first, and then I bought this pack afterwards. So this pack right here is the uh, E-Flight. I've shown you guys the 11, uh, 3S, 11.1 volts, 2200 milliamps, 30C pack. Uh, they're kind of pricey being the, the brand, I guess. They're supposed to last a long time. They can do cycle several hundred charges, no problem. Um, not bad has that ec3 connector honestly uh you can get adapters or make your own that's not really that prevalent it feels to me like by the having these different connectors they want to charge you more for the battery that's just my opinion or the, the maker brand whatever it may be and then uh this is a very affordable pack this was only um so this pack was with taxes and everything out the door i think it was 36 or 37 dollars out the door uh, obviously amazon free shipping so uh, I've flown on this pack first and I actually loved it. And then I got a taste of 4S. So this is a 2200 milliamp 50C 4S pack. Uh, why it was so cheap, it was $24.99 plus tax, two day shipping. Uh, obviously XT30, which is a good connector. I thought about switching everything to XT30. But of course I've gotten, I think four or five of these adapters for like seven or eight bucks. So I just said, screw it, just got the adapters. That one, I don't have to solder and mess with it. I'm not that good and clean at soldering yet. I probably could do something that large, honestly. Um, so you just pop it right on, zero issues. 
it works fine it does add a little bit of weight but being 4s it's really punchy you definitely notice the difference between a 4s battery and a 3s definitely especially for this particular model uh night i wouldn't say night and day. it's it's a significant difference a lot of folks don't even like to fly this plane on 4 or 3s honestly a lot pretty much everybody flies on 4s so these are the two packs i've had now for the longest I've flown quite a few times on each one, um, and so far, no, uh, I mean, it's only been maybe, I'd say about seven or eight charges, no, I'd say about ten charges apiece, and discharges, like, you know, flying or whatever, and, I mean, there's still nice, crisp, square, flat lines, everything still looks good, like I said, um, I don't charge more than two amps on each even though this one can handle up to three, uh, I'm just not gonna do it. Uh, the charger that I have won't do like 2.2. It'll either do one, two, three, and four amps. So I just put on two amps, I charge them up, and I don't go below, honestly, below 3.8. I'm probably gonna start setting it for 3.7. But uh, I've been, typically with the timer and everything that I have it set up, it's about 3.8 voltage. We'll get down about 3.8 on all cells. So, um, so I've gotten quite a few flights on them. I chose to do the Velcro. This is the best thing for your packs. I could tell you that right now. Uh, these work so good. Honestly, I feel confident enough not to even use the little uh, battery straps they give you. Uh, with these particular batteries, I can still use the straps as well with this. It was just like extra security. Uh, if you come to an abrupt stop, that means you crashed. <laughs> so uh, you don't want that. But uh, they hold very very well i have had zero issues with the battery coming loose or anything like that uh if i could fit it like i said i'll use the straps too the bigger ones i may not be able to use the straps uh we'll kind of see that so we'll set these right here for a second uh right here for a second kind of in a picture and then uh the airplane is, oh i'll get into the airplane next so let me since i'm sticking on the batteries right now since i'm hold on one second let me pull this off Oh, I have it in there. That's right. Okay. It's in the back. I'll get it here in a second. So the newest edition, I do have two more on the way. The newest edition is massive. I didn't think I'd get it to fit, but I did. I don't know how uh, the weight, how big of a factor the weight is going to be. Uh, I know you can run for sure a 4S3200 in these planes and they will fly. This is a 3300 milliamp pack. 4s 60c 120 burst i'm not real i don't really the burst thing is eh. uh the 60c is pretty well that's honestly most of the packs i want i want to be over 30 40 c probably over 40 c i would say for this particular setup i would like to get them all 40 over 40 c i do have one that's 30 but that's the elite files are the very first one i got but from here on out i'm only getting 4s uh, pretty much everything I'm going to buy from now on is going to run at least 4S or higher. So, um, HRB, uh, uh, I've never really heard of this brand. I've seen them, these battery packs before, but I personally didn't have one. Uh, from, from the reviews on Amazon, uh, they're pretty good packs for the price. They're reasonable. I think this particular battery is about 30 I think it was with shipping and I think with taxes and everything it was 40 bucks. So it's a $37 battery. So these are the same price. Isn't that crazy? Just because of that brand. 2200, 3300, 1100 more in milliamps and an extra cell. Uh, obviously it is XT660 as well. But like I said, I have about four or five of these. So I just leave one on each one just because, you know, I like it that way. Uh, so there's this pack, uh, very heavy. You can balance it. I did the same thing with these Velcro straps. I put the Velcro strap on a battery pack and I shook it. It's really, really holds it. On this particular one, you cannot do the straps because I'll show you here really quickly why. And what also came with the battery that it pressed me. So I was super happy I got that. So here is the battery tray. And let me go through here. I kind of, kind of a little bit unorganized. I apologize. So I'm having to kind of dig through it. They're just little black straps. I don't know where I threw them. Here we go. 
So you get these little black stra straps. They just, you know, you thread them through the plastic thing and they loop around. You get the gist of it, right? I guess you get a little bit better ones. But when you do that with this large, this fat and wide of a pack, uh, it gets too far out and it starts rubbing and catching. So this will actually hold it. And if you'll look really closely, you'll see kind of a mark right there. Sorry, a mark right there. Might not pick up, it's a very light purple. Uh, I marked it for the CG. So what I do is I take it, because I only put my batteries in the same way, so I know where to go. So this the mark's right there. So I move it to the mark, to where this lines up with the mark, center it. Lines up with the mark and center it. Oh no, I have it backwards. There we go. Line it up with the mark, sorry. So here's the mark. Center it. Okay. So that's how to put it in. Now this slides all the way in. Oh wait. Durr. It goes this way because this is how you pull it with your finger. Sorry, I had like a, so, let me line it up, make sure it's straight and center, there's the marking, there we go. So this slides in, it has to be this far back for the CG be correct. Now, if you're wondering if this is going to hold. It's not gonna pull more force than that. I mean, that's if that doesn't come off, uh, these Velcros are rated for nine pound Velcro. So it's really, really good stuff. Uh, command strips, I highly recommend those. The stickiness doesn't seem to fade. I've used those a bunch of times and hooking them, hooking them. Uh, so my recommendation is find your CG on your airplane, mark it, which I did. I'll show you guys there in a second. Then I put the battery in. And I kept moving it. Now I first started out in the centering it like so, which I do with those batteries and it works out perfectly. This one's just simply too heavy. So I shift it up to where the line is about so. And then I flipped it upside down because the wing's on the bottom. So I flipped the plane upside down, uh, put my finger on the dots I made for the CG. And it was a tiny, tiny bit nose heavy, uh, which I like just a little bit, not much. It's easier to land. And honestly, um, I think it's gonna work just fine. This is pushing it. I would not go more than 3,300 if it was me. I'm sure somebody has stuck a 4,000 milliamp pack in there. I could see it honestly fitting. It's all about the CG and how much power that motor has uh, to fly. You know, you gotta have enough power to move, you know, get enough speed and not be too much weight. That's another factor. So uh, I think this is like, only 100 milliamps higher than what it technically recommends so this is this will work um but what's cool about this pack it came packaged really nicely so let's set it right here for a second there's the battery tray let's set it right here for a second let's move everything up a little bit there we go but this is the little bag that came with the batteries like what is this so it gave me basically every adapter you can think of so you just plug this all over the battery. And here is your, uh, I can't remember what this connector is. I forget what it is, the name of this one. I don't know the name of that one, honestly. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Here's your Dean's, or yeah, Dean's connector, boom. A lot of planes use some, a lot of batteries will actually come in Dean's style. Uh, your, um, what's that called? Uh, Uh, this one, your EC3 connector. I think that's EC3. Let me look at it and verify. Yep, that's EC3. And then this one, I hope it's EC5 because that would be amazing. I don't think so. It's that one uh, red one. Um, or it might be. These are rounded. 
forget what this one is. It's that red one that's real, it looks like, like kind of like a banana. A banana one, maybe? I don't know. But you get a lot of, sorry, I need to focus. You get a lot of connectors. So that's very useful if I get a plane that takes like a weird connector. Uh, I'll have it. Honestly, uh, the, the, the next plane I'm looking at is crazy. It, it should be happening soon. Like, I know, well, uh, it's not even a plane. It's, it's a jet. <laughs> We're not, I mean, technically it is a plane, but it's a, it's a jet. Uh, I've wanted one for the longest times. Um, really quickly, uh, growing up, I would see videos of those jet turbine ones, and I know how expensive and fast they are. I won't be doing that for quite a while, but you can get an EDF jet that is incredibly fast, flies really good if you get the right one, like the Viper or the F-16. I mean, there's a few of them. Um, I haven't made my mind up exactly which one, but there's a few of them, right? And they're incredible. They run off a six. The one, the one, they're small ones, like ones on the 4S, which I could use my 4X packs, I think up to 4,000. But honestly, the one I'm looking at runs on 6S. It can go over 100 miles an hour scale, or not scale, but it can go over 100 kilometers or whatever it is. It's really, really fast jet. I can take up to a four or five, 4,000 milliamp 6S, so I'll be needing to get 6S packs. Uh, it's beautiful. It's supposed to fly. It's supposed to be the best. Uh, beginner friendly jet most likely it's going to be the viper or maybe uh the what was i forget what the other one was but we'll get into that later but they just they're just absolutely incredible so um so my as far as my field bag goes um i did keep the manual because sometimes i forget like the cg but i did mark it out so i won't forget it it's uh 85 millimeters plus plus three minus three or plus three millimeters depending on how you you know measure it um the the instructions to both just in case if i need it uh i do keep my uh battery charger with me in the bag because they do have power at the airfield so once you fly you can charge the batteries i use this little uh smart balance charger the 450b it was very affordable it can do up to four amps grand you have the right pack this one will only do three amps. Uh, I don't plan on charging very high amperage. It would probably be nice, but honestly, I, I'm not uh, that crazy about it. 50 watt max. It will do those one packs you put in your um, controllers, the G Life or whatever, G Dash Life, G Life. So the G Life, OG Life. Um, so you just click it and press. You can go one, two, three, four amps, whatever you want. Put in up to four S's, plug into here. So these work okay. I am gonna get more of a hobby grade charger, honestly. Uh, I keep a scale for weight purposes, how heavy battery packs are, you know, being able to uh, weigh stuff. Uh, you know, I'm adding certain things to it so I could weigh it. Uh, this right here, the iFixit, <laughs> gotta love this. Uh, it has everything, you can, every tool you could want to take anything apart. Uh, keep that, I also keep, uh, some uh, Bob uh, Smith Industries Foam Cure. This is really, really good uh, glue. Uh, it's there's see, yeah, there's some other better stuff I'm sure, but this is pretty good. Uh, obviously, I keep this wrench, my lanyard. I just got a <laughs> Cincinnati lanyard. You get a Spectrum lanyard. It's like twenty dollars. It's ridiculous. I pay like five bucks for this. They're just crazy for that. The battery straps, obviously, and then I got a couple, you know, small screwdrivers. Um, not, you know, the cut stuff, the bind plug, a couple extra screws for the plane. Um, the uh, tool you need to actually adjust your gimbals or anything else on the controller, take it apart. Uh, extra batteries for the controller. Um, I have two of these. These are very important. These are voltage alarm slash battery tester to see what how much voltage is in each, each pack. They're the other uh, two connectors I was talking about. Uh, and then I got two that were wrong. I didn't want to return them. So these will go from, looks like, uh, let's say if you have this pack right here and you want to use it on something that's XT30, this will go from, um, you know, like XT30 plane, 60 plane to uh, EC3. So that connector can be useful actually. If you got a plane, you know, that uses uh, XT60 and you want to use an EC3 battery, then I can do that. So that's kind of cool. Um, 
Uh, let's see, the batteries to the uh, K, uh, XK-A600, I love that plane. I actually salvaged this little guy from a 3D stunt plane that was crashed. It's basically the same guy as that. But that one's, you know, a warbird, so it still looks different. But, hey, I feel like saving him. I didn't want him to perish away with the plane. Pliers, uh, uh, wall adapter. Uh, you never know when you might need one. Uh, four batteries for the res for the uh, transmitter. And then uh, I bought a set of these right here, which has, like, every kind of known uh, pliers you need. And then... The other side is the same thing, but all cutters, you know, side, front cutters, all that fun stuff. Uh, several of those. Uh, so that's pretty much what I keep in the bag. Obviously, the transmitter is in the case. Um, let's move this to the side real quick and pull out the transmitter. Honestly, the transmitter I've been super, super happy with. Uh, if I go back, I don't know if I'd spend the extra $100.00 to have a nicer shell with the rubber grips uh and then voice and then on the body box like they have was the plug this one has to use the bind connection so honestly those three features i don't know if it's been a hundred dollars for uh it's performing beautifully i've flown quite a bit with it it feels great um the memory is amazing on it. That's the echo transfer stuff. I can update. So there's future updates, you know, that allow us to have voice or um, new files or setups or the fixed where uh, for some reason some of those safe planes, if you don't bind them and you don't have enough switches to have the safe switch, then like your throws aren't as good or something weird like that. I can't remember. You're supposed to have a fix for that soon. So... Uh, you know, I I really love this transmitter. Uh, you know, I like it a lot. The the three batteries I have, I have two batteries on the way. Uh, they are four cell, twenty six hundred. So they're basically a four cell like this. I think they're sixty C uh, packs, but they're twenty six hundred. So I felt like that's a good balance between flight time and power. Uh, instead of having something that's so big and heavy. We'll see in the speed and power. We'll kind of, I'll do a comparison of all five batteries and tell you what's the best for this plane. Speed, flight, time, agility, all that fun stuff. We'll get into all that. Uh, so if you see, you'll see a little bit of markings right here. One of it was uh, the first time he landed it uh, with these dra uh, tail draggers. Uh, the way he landed, he actually did a really good job, but like, I don't know if it was a bump or something and like it kind of wanted to tip just a little it started to tip a little bit and then it went and just like barely hit it and he pulled up he hit pulled up on elevator and immediately put the tail down or down on the elevator up i think and you know he's like oh my god i'm sorry i'm like no so i think it was this tiny little one right here but then i did these other ones by landing uh by landing in the grass the first few landings i did i landed in the grass honestly um the dirt, I think, got some of this paint, this yellow paint off. I could touch it up with some yellow paint. The prop itself is not damaged. Uh, it may need a balance, I would imagine, uh, as many times as I've flown. I've never balanced a prop. I don't know how, but uh, I need to look into that. Um, the plane itself has been amazing. So let me show you a few things that do happen with these kinds of plane. I'm going to have to grab the stand for a little bit so I can kind of point everything out like I want to. So I'm going to... Let me tilt this back a little bit. There we go. Sorry for the jerkiness. So where the uh, fuselage comes out and you push it in and lock it with a magnet. Uh, some folks keep that clear little tab here to lift up. I just grab the sides. It doesn't bother me any. But it's starting to flake a little bit right here. The paint's flaking off right here. Just right there. Um, everything else looks really good, like I said. I have, uh, when I land in the grass, so here's another thing about this airplane. I'm gonna be honest with you guys about, um, it has to be very, very manicured grass. These wheels aren't that large. I mean, they look pretty large. I mean, they, they got the scale right with the way they made it look with the little strut or shock or whatever there, shock absorber or whatever, and then actual tread on the tires. Like, I appreciate that detail. And, you know, the machine guns and the exhaust for the Marlin, whatever motor 
I think it's a Marlin when they put in these. Um, like they try to make it look really scale with the four bladed prop, the cockpit, the guy in the cockpit, the little stuff behind him, uh, with the, it has the fuel tanks on the drop tanks or whatever. I take them off. I'm not flying with those. It just creates extra drag. I guess if you want it to look more scale and you fly scale, maybe that's fine. Um, but most of it is fine. Like there's really no damage. Uh, the only damage that I've caused besides a little bit of paint wear right here, which really doesn't hurt anything and obviously this kind of did it on its own this just from opening and closing it maybe the temperature or opening and closing it so many times i don't know um and then me when i would hit the grass the plane would kind of tip and then go and then boom fall over slowly but at that point the throttle was cut off that's why nothing broke on it nothing was damaged because it was very so slight i mean you would just slowly watch it like tip and it did that a few times which caused a little bit of wrinkles in here and like it like it kind of like i guess the weight hit it a little bit so it kind of wrinkled a little bit right here uh, a little bit of paint came off right here which if i was to buy some tough truck paint kind of like clean this up a little bit and repaint this you would never know it's not like structurally damaged where you can't use it or you have issues with it um as far as here let me turn the prop a little bit there we go as far as the throws go, you are going to need to do some adjustment. Uh, mine, this is the best formula, I think. For the rudder, you want to put on the uh, innermost hole, which will give you the most throws. So you want to turn on your plane, see where, it's, where it centers itself at. You want to put it in this hole. And then if it's not straight, you know, adjust this servo horn. You want to do mechanical trims first, adjust it that way first. And then if you have to do a digital trim, that's fine. But as you can see, it's pretty darn straight on its own. Same with the elevator. Uh, I chose to go with, can't remember. Yep, the innermost hole for that one as well. So it'll give me the most elevator. Uh, if you'll notice, if you take this out of the box, I'm not saying they trimmed it incorrectly but the throws are like very short. Like it, like when I didn't have it on that last hole, it only went up so much. I mean, it was scary. Like the guy that helped me do my first flight was like, whoa, like uh, we're gonna have to adjust that or I don't feel comfortable flying that. And I did just, I didn't want it wrecked and I wanted to, you know, fly with the most throws that I can so I can, you know, be able to pull up when I need to or, do any kind of acrobatics in the future or any kind of sharp turns or anything I may need to do. I want to be able to do that. Um, the uh, ailerons, I don't know why I had so much trouble saying that word before. I don't know why. The ailerons are fine. They, they're working well. The throws, I guess, are okay for that. Some folks adjust that too. But honestly, I'm fine with the ailerons. It will uh bank really hard if you want it to obviously with safe it only banks so much obviously and then you hit a switch i have my safe on a switch so i don't have to fly with it i've flown with so sorry about that my fiance called uh so i was talking about safe um you don't have to have that um on you can uh assign it to a switch and turn it off uh, a lot of folks don't even bind with safe um the reason I did it just to have it as an option uh, to help me if I need it. Uh, but honestly, I want to get to the point where I don't use it at all. Since I'm still a new pilot, when I land and take off, I use safe. And then typically when I fly around, I don't use it. Um, uh, but I don't do anything fancy with this yet. I don't do any rolls or flips. I have done one flip. I have done one uh, loop. And I was getting ready to do a roll, and then I got kind of far out there, and I kind of freaked out and turned the safe on and came back home. So I don't plan on doing stunts and tricks with this, which it can, but I don't plan on doing it until uh, I get a little bit more experience. Both LRNs are working just fine. Uh, no damages or anything to the wings. Same thing with the stabs. They look great. Like I said, a little bit of uh, stretch down, I guess, from, you know, when he landed, boop, like pushed the foam a little bit. The paint kind of cracked a little bit, but it's nothing, like, structurally bad. I can touch it up with some paint that's no issue there uh the landing gear have been holding up pretty well uh it depends on how hard you can you can land hard enough on asphalt and break these i've seen it happen so many times um so actually the first let me turn the, this way so we get some light on it just kind of show you everything underneath there so those are the ailerons uh flaps we do have flaps on this and i have used them so let's quickly uh, and that's where the drop tanks hook up 
I wonder if it has other spots to put, uh, like maybe here, put like some, um, ordinance, like some bonds and stuff. That would look cool. I'm sure you could technically do that. You can glue them on or hook them on or whatever. Uh, that's air, I guess from cooling it comes out of there or pressure maybe. I don't know. But, uh, so the landing gear in this are, I wouldn't say they're super sturdy, but they're not very easy to break either. They're plastic. They're plastic. I do believe. I don't think they're metal um so he landed it for me that evening and then uh the first time i flown that evening you know i flew it around he took off and landed it for me and the next few days when i went back up there uh the first i think four land uh take off well take off i take off off of asphalt but the first four landings i did myself was in the grass and that's when i would land uh you know land it was pretty smooth I'd immediately kill the throttle. Uh, it would roll a little bit, hit a divot or a low spot or tall grass and immediately go boop forward and then just slowly, very, very painfully and slowly flip over and land on the top of it. Luckily, I did not damage it besides the, um, uh, bleh, besides the, uh, little bit of cracks and the stress from the paint right there. Besides that, it's pretty good shape. This right here looks okay. And uh, so after that, I've landed maybe another, I don't know, 10, 10, 11, 12 times on asphalt myself. Um, and I didn't start actually using the flaps until like my maybe eighth, seventh or eighth landing. Flaps do make a difference. They really do slow you down. I do have them set on the... Um, fact like the recommended factory settings or whatever so it's like 100 percent flaps and 90 i don't know why we wouldn't have like 100 and like a 50 maybe i don't know it's weird i guess one's like take off one's landing um honestly i do like the stars right there it's only on one side it's weird oh it's on the back of it too um just put it on the front yeah there's another one right there it's weird it's like one's here and then one's there I don't know, maybe it's supposed to be on the... I don't know, that's weird. But, um... <laughs> sorry, I got sidetracked there. So, I don't know if I ever talked about assembly. It's very easily. Four screws hold on the main wing right there. One, two, three, four. Uh, two screws hold on the stabs with a... Uh, I don't know if it's a carbon fiber or metallic aluminum a rod that goes through it. And that's pretty much it. Uh, obviously, we we'll push those wires through the wing into the fuselage connect everything correctly uh link i think one uh clevis to the servo horn and that's about it i mean it was very simple assembly very simple setup uh i do like the flaps like i was saying they slow you down and it makes it easier for me to land uh i had initial issues of trying to line up like lining up was hard for me initially i've gotten better i still need to improve I've landed a lot on asphalt now and I don't flip over anything no more. Um, so yeah, I'm really impressed with this plane. It's fun. It's a beautiful plane in flight. Uh, the colors do reflect some sunlight a little bit. It can be a pain to see it sometimes like, you know, but it's, it'd have been cool to have like a yellow or red tail one would have been cool, but this one's a little different. So I like it as well. Um, I like everything about it. It just looks really, really good decent quality, good quality, you know, um, but the only issue that I've personally had is the, I don't know if I land hard or what it may be, or it wasn't that glued that well to begin with. So there are these four little screws in here that keep on this little, uh, landing gear, little cover thing right here. Uh, and then there's a little frame that's glued in here that these four screws connect to. Well, the frame itself became loose, completely unglued about at least half of it or more. And it, it was weird, like turning, like it didn't want to turn as much one way or it was slow to turn in another direction. And then I realized it was loose. I unscrewed all four screws, pulled the piece up closer to this side of the wheel, uh, laid a good amount of glue all the way around, pushed that piece in there. Then I uh, tightened up the four screws, made sure it was level and flat. And sure enough, it's perfectly fine now, rock solid. Um, so that was the only thing that structurally wanted to fail. 
Well, it would have probably been fine. Like, I, I don't know how many times I could have probably flown with it like that or if I'd have had any more issues with it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, didn't cause me to wreck or anything, luckily for me. So, that's glued and it's solid, so I'm fine with that. Um, the motor is, I think, at 850 kV. I wish it was a 950, would have been perfect. I, the ideal setup, I think, in my opinion, for this particular plane would be a 950 kV motor with a 50 amp ESC. That would scream in this. Um, a lot of, uh, quite a few folks actually, not so much the motor, but have upgraded the ESCs to 50 amps. So this has a 40 amp ESC, has AX3X safe, uh, a spectrum, you know, receiver uh, in there. Uh, the servos are digital and supposedly metal geared. I'd imagine they're digital and metal geared if I had to guess. Uh, what else? I try to, you can see how I try to get everything in there. I have not have not put any like hot glue or anything to hold these two together. Like, so they'll come apart. I'm hoping they don't. Uh, it can, things can vibrate and come apart. <laughs> uh, there's the magnet for the, the, the uh, little cockpit guy and everything. The cockpit looks okay. It'd be nice to have like a yoke or something in there as well, but it doesn't look too bad, you know? Fingerprint a little dirt and dust there, and then you wipe it off a little bit. But yeah, it, it doesn't look bad. Um, it has quite a bit of room in there. You can see the ESE in there. You see, it has like a channel for the air from when it comes off the motor. Air hits the ESC, the battery, and everything in, and I guess it comes out of the back somewhere. Up, oh, right back here. See that hole right there? Comes right back out there. So, Air travels through it, cooling all the electronic components in here, the ESC, the battery, everything in there, which is nice to get a little bit of airflow for it, especially the motor definitely needs it. Um, airflow is very important for that to keep it cool. Uh, between flights, uh, the only main thing I let cool is the batteries. Uh, the ESC will cool once you start flying and get airflow over it. Same with the motor. I'm not too worried about that. I wouldn't probably do a I would wait a few minutes in between flights, but usually there's someone up there flying as well and we kind of alternate. I mean, you can't fly when other people are flying, but if it's only a few guys, we just are polite and courteous and let, you know, folks uh, fly. <laughs> there's my AMA membership right there. Um, one of them was really sticky and I just stuck it inside the case and the other one's in my wallet. So, yeah, I'm super happy with the battery choices. Like I said, there's going to be a vast different size capacity and i mean it's just they're all different in some way so uh i'm gonna be testing out but uh honestly i only have one 3s and i only plan on having one 3s honestly i plan on everything else i plan on being 4s so i'm gonna have a 2200 4s two two 2600 4s's one 3300 4s and then uh, this 3S. So I'm gonna be comparing all the batteries, you know, flight times between the 22, 26, and 3300 milliamp. Uh, you know, like a 2200 3S and a 2200 4S, kind of comparing the flight time as well. I know one's a 50C and the other one's a 30, but you know, I just wanna get you guys some realistic flight times when I record, whoever's gonna record, like your sister or whoever, uh, from the time I take off to the time I land, uh, that'll be the flight time. Uh, we'll try to get the times actually put on the videos. I do want to, uh, we'll do want her as my editor again. We haven't really done videos and stuff because all this COVID-19 stuff. So, uh, you know, it, what are you going to do? You know, it, it's crazy. So we try to, you know, limit to what we do, but, um, yeah, so I'm really happy with the, like I said, this is the June night version. I don't know if you know, it says it on the side. On the other side, it says June night right on it. Um, 1.2 meter Mustang P51D. Uh, I really like this plane. EPO, some folks don't like EPO. I like EPO because it's very durable, lightweight, um, and parts are not that expensive. Like I was looking at parts for it, it's not that bad. Um, if you wreck it, just make sure you get all, all electronics everything out of it just get a new fuselage or a new wing whatever breaks and you know it wouldn't be that fun running routing you know the wiring and stuff like that you know through it wouldn't probably be the hardest part 
putting it together is nothing but just actually putting the wires through wiring it and hooking it all up would probably be the hardest part the hardest part of this entire assembly is making sure not making sure but like reading the labels putting them together make sure they're all the way pressed in brown to brown yellow to yellow orange to orange um and then i used a little i was going to use zip tie but i like the twisty light because i could untwist it check it out make sure something's not unplugged or plugged in or whatever and then twist it back i don't have to carry a bunch of zip ties and keep cutting them every time i feel like that's a waste uh, so I kind of got it tucked in there pretty well, nice and flat. Uh, oh, the markings for the CG. So I did one dot. Man, it's going to be hard to see on this camera. See that purple dot? Uh, before I did it, I did it with like a fingernail. It just looks dumb. Did a dot right there and also did a dot right there. In case this one fades, that one's kind of there. It's not that big of a dot. I don't mind it being there. Um, mine is 85 millimeters plus or minus three millimeters. So there's that dot and then a dot over there to correspond with it. So yeah, so of course it has to be upside down. You just put your finger in those spots and if it tilts towards the nose, that means it's nose heavy, it tilts towards the tail, it's tail heavy. You do not want a tail heavy plane at all. If anything, you want it balanced, but if anything, just a tiny little bit tilting forward nose heavy just a little bit especially if you're a beginner you want a little bit of nose heavy not a lot just to help you land a little bit but uh you know so yeah i'm super impressed with it i like the way it handles on the runway it can torque steer like the prop you know from the torque having a for us like it will kind of turn on you just from its torque i guess uh being a tail dragger you can you know tilt it forward like i've done that but obviously the grass had a lot to do with that uh honestly land on asphalt if you can first couple flights okay if, if it's really really well manicured and really flat uh yeah maybe go for that but honestly for me the grass at that place is pretty they cut it pretty often but it's still just a little bit of divots and not smooth enough honestly for me so i'm like yeah you know whatever but uh yeah so that's pretty much the entire uh setup that i use at the airfield that's the plane i've been flying honestly i haven't really flown my xk uh a600 and then uh the super club voltex whatever the brand that is the super club is still down i can't find a rudder for it so there's another model that's pretty close to it it's a little bit bigger instead of being 750 it's like um, maybe one meter or 900 something and the rudders look similar but i'm just worried it's going to be totally wrong size the the way it connects is kind of similar so it sucks i don't know if the parts off the hobby ryzen super club version it's supposed to be a similar size like i guess the voltex kind of copied or cloned it i guess so maybe I can use that part. It's just a shame because it's a good motor, good electronics, good ailerons, good everything. Just the tail rudder right there. That piece is just completely gone. You got the stabs, just no rudder. So <laughs> it sucks. Like it's a perfectly good plane. It's brushless, runs on two cell. Like that plane should be fun to fly. It should be a good trainer and it's a bummer. But since I've gotten comfortable with this, I just honestly been flying this like crazy. Uh, every chance I get, I go to the airfield. Honestly, guys, that's most of my time uh, has been going to the airfield. Honestly, um, if I do have free time, you know, I work five, sometimes six days a week. So, you know, don't have as much time as I used to. So, but yeah, it's the setup. Um, I'm gonna see, I'm hoping the straps work with the 2600s. Um, but if not, it's not the end of the world. Um, like I said, they're easy to take off and on. I got all those adapters. I'm gonna leave an adapter on each one of these. Uh, and I think those, and the cool part is those 2600s are EC, um, EC3 by the way. So I do have EC3 to a different kind of connector as well, so. I think I don't know but yeah so you know most of the products I'm gonna be getting from Horizon Hobbies either gonna be EC3 or EC5 those jets I think uh, can be XT60 but a lot of them will have a, a EC5 connector on them just because they have like these little hex 
kind of like bolt screw things in them so they spark and they have a lot of current going through them so um you know they take a lot of juice for those jets so it's i'm gonna have to get uh i'm obviously gonna get you know batteries for that it's gonna be 6s so it's not gonna be the same batteries uh they do make jets that are a little bit smaller than the one i'm looking at the, the viper is a i think 70 uh millimeter uh ducted uh electric ducted fan um edf or whatever uh jet uh i saw i think it was a 64 or 60 millimeter that has that runs on 4s um it's a little bit smaller i don't know if i'm gonna go that route it's a little bit cheaper too i think they're like 199 bucks or 179 bucks something like that and then the viper one that i really really want is like 200 and something so I think 240 or 250 or something like that, maybe more. So they're not cheap. This is not cheap either. I when I when I, I when I, once I saw what she got me, I knew how much she spent on it. This was not cheap. I think with ship with shipping is free, but with taxes and everything, this comes out to like a dollar shy of 300. Just this plane alone, obviously. So this this hobby is not cheap, um, to be honest with you. But it's so much fun to fly. Honestly, I've had nitro cars, electric cars. Nitro train, nitro planes, electric planes. I've had electric helicopters. I've had tanks. I've had uh, electric boats, nitro boats. I've pretty had much had everything in the hobby. Like, well, not the highest, highest, like the top of the line stuff, but I had some pretty high uh, m m uh, hobby grade stuff. And honestly, what, what to be honest with you guys what's one of the funnest things to do is to fly an rc plane um i've not flown a jet so a jet would probably be even be even more funner but or even more fun but uh i i, I don't know that i haven't experienced it i've seen at that club i saw my first jet turbine little motor runs on kerosene one um uh, at that club um uh, you know, I've seen them on, everyone's seen the videos on uh, YouTube, but to see it in person and to hear it was bonkers. It sounds dead on a jet. Um, fast, loud, powerful, nimble. I mean, this thing was incredible. Uh, he actually is selling his spare motor. He just rebuilt it, did a bunch of work to it. $850. New, I think it's like sixteen or 1700 for a motor like that so they're really very powerful jets the edf ones are pretty powerful they sound kind of cool but it's not like the turbine ones or the kerosene ones or kerosene or propane i think you can run them on jet fuel or kerosene i'm sorry i think it uses propane to get them started and get them going but um or build pressure maybe i can't remember you have to pressurize it with an air compressor too i don't know there's a lot to it but uh maybe i'll do like a video on that and have one of the guys up there that flies it talk about it and kind of share that with you guys that would be amazing i do technically i did save a youtube name for the club i, d I don't want to release that channel yet or put any content on it until the club itself approves of it i don't want to do anything with that name for that club until they approve it until they say it's okay for me to shoot videos and kind of I don't want to make money off that channel. I want to share with you guys how amazing that club is, how friendly they are, how knowledgeable they are. Uh, they can share tips and, and you know, instructors can share tips, you know, actual really experienced airplane pilots. Uh, you know, a lot of them are actual like war veterans and flown planes and been in the Air Force and all that. So it's a really good group of guys up there. Um, I. I absolutely love coming up there, um, you know, I absolutely love it. And I've seen a couple of wrecks and it sucks. I hope not to wreck this, this is not going wood and cross the fingers because I don't want to wreck this plane. I like it so much, I don't want to have to do any work to it. Uh, I did see a few mods that I would like to do, uh, like the FMS versions, FMS versions have like a sound box, that sounds kind of cool. Uh, I've seen lights. So the coolest thing I've ever seen on these is a light kit, but not just any light kit. So look at the light kit. So like the red side would be strawberry or port side or, or 
I don't know, there's a certain color on each side and a certain color on the tail. But the coolest part of that setup was, he's a fellow YouTuber, um, is he has landing uh, lights. So when the gear open up, the lights show and they're really bright and it literally lights up the ground. So, it, I mean, it wouldn't have to be pitch black, but if it's starting to get dark, uh, you would be, be able to easily see the plane and when you're landing you would see kind of where it's landing at So that would be amazing. I think it's Brian Phillips maybe on YouTube uh, His channel is very good. I absolutely love his channel. I watch it all the time. Shout out to you, man you're just, you're Great channel. He has lots and lots of planes all kinds of them and has a very good pilot He's been flying for about five years So I hope to get half as good as that by then so uh, he does like, you know, bind and fly ones. He does pretty much everything. Sets them up, mods, flying, all kinds of fun stuff. Helicopters, I think, too, and drones. So, yeah, I want to share that with you guys as well. So, there's the setup I got. Uh, this case is okay, honestly. I wouldn't count on dropping this case and feeling... Com like, if you dropped it in this case, you're probably going to damage them. This case is not like... I've seen those big, like, almost like a container. Those really, really big cases... Those are the ones, you, if you drop it, you don't worry that much. That one, I may worry. If, if it's a short drop, it may be okay. But I don't plan on dropping it, honestly, with these. So that's why it's convenient. It's small. It's compact. I grabbed the main bag handles, and that comes with it. So that's why I did that. Uh, oh, another thing. The 8E antenna can move. So as you know, it doesn't go straight out. It goes from the sides, like dispersed from the sides. So you can adjust this. You can't do that on the uh, DX8. You can only do it on DX8E. Um, the handle, like I said, it's only like three things different between the two. And I'm just not going to pay $100 for those three things. I just want to kind of re reiterate that. Uh, what else? Tools, everything in the back. Oh, I paid 5 bucks for that Husky bag. It's on sale for like Home Depot or Lowe's. It's only like $5. So it's made really well. So I'm going to get off here, guys. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. Kind of shared some of my gear and everything i got uh i'll be having some flight videos soon and hopefully that uh that club approves that channel and i can uh share a lot of cool stuff with you guys so thanks for watching thanks to all the new subscribers and i'll see you guys next time peace <laughs>